Which you guys got another video here for you on how to modify a Windows 11 ISO to bypass TPM and secure boot on unsupported hardware. Now, if you go to install Windows 11 on a PC that is not supported because Microsoft have quite strict uh, hardware requirements to be able to install Windows 11. Now, we all know that there's been changes by Microsoft to try and stop you from installing Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, but this method is a really simple way of installing it. Now, I know you can use Rufus, but if you're getting this error code right here saying your PC can't run Windows 11, I'm going to show you how to create your own answer file because people were saying they were getting a bit confused and I rushed it a little bit and I didn't explain. So I'm going to go into more detail here and explain how you can use the unattended XML file or auto unattended XML file, uh, which we can use to bypass uh, the requirements and it'll also remove a lot of bloat and other stuff from Windows during the installation process. So I'm going to break it down in more detail here. So first off, let's head over to the generate auto unattend.xml files for Windows 10 and Windows 11. Now we know Rufus is pretty decent at what it does, but it's limited compared to what we have here. So here we're going to go through and select all of our region and languages, check our processor architecture, start doing our setup settings which is bypass windows 11 requirements and check tpm secure boot etc and also allow windows 11 to be installed without a internet connection here we can give the pc a name rather than using what you see on the screen so i'm going to call it pc 101 and if i had two pcs it would be pc 102 and so on let's go ahead and do the time zone here this is the partitioning part here if you want to see a separate video on setting this up so it will basically install onto uh, say partition zero then let me know in the comment section and i'll be happy to make that video you can set this up for gpt or mbr depending on how you want to go about doing this if you don't set this up you will have to go through the process manually and create your own partition manually if you set this up it will automatically do it for you. But if you want to see a separate video on that, then let me know in the comments. But we're going to set this to manual so we can set it up ourselves. Next, we're going to move on down to this section right here, which is our generic key. This is going to use a generic key. This is where you can choose what version of Windows you are installing. I am choosing Windows Pro. Here we can set up our account. I'm going to call it admin with no password. And it's going to be in the administration group. Uh, and also we've got the user group here depending on how you want to set yours up it's pretty self-explanatory there first log on this is your first log on section right here and now we have right here which is the password does not expire i'm going to leave that as is for this video and again use the default policy right here this is where you can disable some optimization stuff like uh, disable windows defender and disable uh, uh, system protection which is your uh, system restore enable long path names we're going to do that as well and you can go through and select what you want here you can allow execution of scripts here if you want to add scripts in to your particular build we'll turn off the system sounds and disable app suggestions and also disable widgets and prevent the device encryption this will stop uh, the drive being encrypted during the installation process and this is something that microsoft are forcing on you uh, during the installation process on 23H2 and 24H2. Next, we can go through and remove all of the bloat. So I'm going to select all here. I'm just going to uncheck the PowerShell ISE and also Windows Terminal. You can uncheck what you like. I'm going to be removing all of this from the particular build here. Once we've done this, we can then move on down to the next section. And what we'll do is we'll go down to the script section. I'm not going to cover this area here because people are complaining, saying it's far too complex and they don't understand it. So I'm just going to skip over this part because there's a lot of people that just don't understand it. And there's no point in me wasting all my time on that section right there. Once we've got this all done, we can download our XML file. Let's quickly open up our XML file so you can see it. And I'll explain roughly uh, what you're getting here. So under this section right here, this is your language, which we selected, which is to do with uh, English United States. And you see English Great Britain, English US, English Great Britain for your user local. And then you're going into your product key. This is going to be a generic key here uh, that you're going to be using unless you want to use your real key. This is the section where it's going to use the uh, bypass 
for a TPM check and also bypass secure boot, bypass storage check, bypass CPU check and so on. The next section is the generalized or specialized area and you can see order one right the way through uh, to up to 50 odd and you can add more in. This is where you can add stuff in and uh, you can see here it's going to be making these changes to our system uh, that we've requested it to do so. So you can see order one, order two, order three and so on. It's going to run a bunch of PowerShell commands it's going to add some registry keys and it's going to be doing a lot of changes to the system and it goes up to order 54 so let me just quickly show you by adding one extra order in just to give you an idea of what you can do by adding more stuff into these and customizing it i'm not going to go too heavy into it because people were getting a bit confused so let me just quickly highlight this one area here copy this and we'll go down a layer here and we're going to paste this in. Now we have 254, so let me change this to 55. And now we can add in another registry edit here. So let me highlight this area here. And we're going to change this to something else that we want to add in. And this is how you can edit your own XML files uh, after the fact. So we're going to go and add this one in here. And you'll be just going down the list and adding these in. So what have we instructed it to do? We've instructed it to uh, do a registry edit, add this path in there, which is this path, and then it's going to add a, a DWORD 32-bit value key, and it's going to call that key uh, this here, and then it's going to add a value of 2 in there. You can see here, and it will add a value of 2. And that's basically all you're instructing it to do. So you're going to add this key in, and you will just go down the list and add these in, and this will add a policy in to block uh, that particular app inside your privacy area, inside your privacy and security section in Windows. And this is one way to do it. And I also showed you another way to do it uh, by creating a dollar OEM dollar folders and stuff on the actual directory. Watch that video. It was yesterday's. So the computer name is going to be PC 101 here. We're also going to be doing the out of box experience. Uh, and also setting up our account, which is called admin in the administration or administrators group. And also the password is uh, blank. But if you wanted to add a password in, you would just go ahead and put a password in here. And you can see it says true. And the auto logon would be for username admin enabled true. And again, there's no password here. And this is the section where we've got a bunch of other options, which is to do with your wireless setup. And we also have the EULA, hide the EULA page. It's just going to skip that. And it's then going to move on and do a couple of extra orders here. And it's going to move down and then start removing all of these applications from the uh, install. And that's basically it. That's what it's going to do in a nutshell. Now we can edit our file. So let's go ahead and put in our auto unattended file. So we're going to use any burn here. Select a standard Windows 11 ISO, which we got right here. And all you need to do here is open this up inside AnyBurn. And inside the main root directory of this, you're going to click on Add and add your auto unattended file. And it's that simple. Once you add that in, it should be right here. And that's the file we was just looking at. And what we're going to do now is we're going to click Next and recreate our ISO with that file inside of it. So let me just go ahead and rename this. And we can call this say for instance no underscore tpm uh, something like that let's remove that bracket there we go and you can call yours whatever you like and this now cl click on create and this will create that file for us and i'll quickly show you once this has been completed how it will bypass the tpm uh, check and how it will just go ahead and install this on any sort of unsupported hardware if that's what you're trying to do now of course we're doing much more than just bypassing the tpm check and everything else we're removing all of the bloat from it as well and doing a bunch of other uh, custom checks as i showed you in yesterday's video so now we're going to change the iso here on vm workstation so i can actually emulate a system that has a bios and it has unsupported hardware so i've now selected this right here and we got this set up to BIOS so it doesn't actually install. But this now will bypass that and go ahead and install without um, encrypting the drive and, and setting it all up the way it would do on a VMware workstation or how it would do on 
a normal PC which has unsupported hardware. So it's now skipping past that part here, which is where it got caught before. You'll see it will just skip the install bit and take you straight here. And now we can now click next. You can see the box has now changed. Click next. It's giving us what Windows 11 Pro, which is what I chose. And now we can set up our drive, which I talked about earlier on. You can have that done automatically if you wish. And it will now go ahead and install. Let me speed through here and get to the end so I can show you exactly what it actually does once it's finished the installation process. So we'll quickly skip along and you can see a bunch of boxes popping up. That's OK because it's reading the file. It will bypass the um, Microsoft account requirement here and it will let you do a local account is exactly what you want here. So we'll just let that go through and it will go past this and skip past this because that's how we have configured our auto unattended XML file. So let it just go ahead and do what it needs to do here and it should skip past this section. And once that's done, I'll speed it up again and we'll let that get to the uh, installation part where you'll see it. So let me just quickly speed this process up so we can get to the end of the installation. And there we go, it's now coming to the end and we should be at the desktop very soon. And there we go, it's now at the desktop. And you can see you've got a very clean install here, no bloat, everything has been removed. And again, I've done videos showing you how to customize this even more and making setting changes on the privacy and security settings page and all that stuff. Watch those videos, they're in my catalog. I've done one yesterday and the one the, the day before. And you can see now we have a quite a clean system here. We have an admin on a local account and we also got it called PC 101. And we also have some other changes in here. So let's go ahead and check out BitLocker here. You'll see that's turned off. It hasn't encrypted the drive at all. And let me just quickly shut this down and I'll show you that we were on a BIOS setup. So let me just quickly shut this down and I'll quickly show you that we was on a BIOS and that's why it blocked it before, but it now allowed us to install it because we've put that bypass in there. So if I go back into my settings here inside a VMware workstation, again, this would be a real PC with a working BIOS, but it works exactly the same under the options tab inside the advanced area here. If I show you this right area here, you'll see that we are on BIOS and not UEFI. If I selected UEFI, it would want to encrypt the drive and basically install Windows 11 that way on a VMware workstation. But we are set to BIOS, which is now mimicking a unsupported hardware. So basically, that's it. We have now uh, showed you how to quickly set up that to bypass all of that stuff and remove all the bloat during the installation and installing it on unsupported hardware as well. And again, it's very simple and easy to do. It saves having to run all those debloat scripts. Once you have all of your registry tweaks added into that file, it's just going to go ahead like I showed you in there how to edit it. Once you added all of those in as different order numbers, it's just basically going to make loads of changes to your system during the installation process. And it will be a simple case of keeping that file and just importing it into the very next Windows 11 ISO that they release or Windows 10 ISO. It's that simple and you won't have to go through all of the palaver of installing Windows 11 or Windows 10 and having to jump through all those hoops to be able to uh, install Windows 11 like uh, having a Microsoft account and also having an internet connection and also having to decrypt your hard drive because it wants to encrypt your hard drive and all these stupid things that Microsoft enforce on you and all of the privacy settings that you have to go through and change every single time, you won't have to with this file because it will do it all for you. It's that simple. Anyway, I hope this has been a little bit more understandable uh, compared to the last video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know in the comment section below what you want to see. If you want to see more of this stuff, I'll be happy to make those videos for you. I just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. So I do appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.